Hello everybody, it's City Matt Haven here today, and we're going to be going over the T32 today. Now, T32, it's an American Tier 8, and it's been in the game since day one. This is a tank that recently had a buff put on it, and we're talking like a few months back it was buffed. Uh, maybe even about a year or two years ago. I can't remember the exact time it was buffed, but all I remember is the last time I played the T32, it had 198 base penetration combined with 245 premium pin so it was more comparable to let's say the brain fart if i can find it here we go the chrysler k with the 198 260 but it was 245 so yeah like the, the gun handling and everything else is more comparable to the uh, chrysler k but it's changed quite a bit now, if we go ahead and jump over to, let's say, statistically here, taking a look at the statistics. Now, 218 base pin, 265 premium pin, 320 alpha. We're going to jump more into this weapon and the reload and the weapon here in a minute. But first things first, 1550 hit points, uh, 400 view range. Keep in mind, this is a heavy. That 400 view range is going to be absolutely amazing. 35 top speed, you're going to be... You know, you're, you're not the fastest on the field, but 35 is enough to rush and get in the position, get hauled down, which is what this tank is going to be succeeding in a lot of the time. Now, base statistics, we got six rounds a minute, so 10 second reload. Uh, the 320 alpha, the penetration, reload time, aim time of 2.3 seconds. That's really nice to have. 43 rounds. That's also really nice to have. Um, Accuracy, 0.37. It's not the greatest, but also at the same time, it's not the worst. Most of the time, you're going to try and get mid-range inside this tank. And if you're mid-range, dispersion value is not really going to be affecting you too much. Gun depression, 10 degrees, absolutely amazing gun depression. Gun elevation of 20 degrees, just as impressive to have. Now, the turret armor, 298, 197, 152. So that's your front, side, rear. Now, traverse speed, 25 degrees. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. You can boost this if you want to, but I don't feel a need to boost it along with the traverse speed of the tracks. Don't really see a massive use for really trying to get that up. Uh, terrain resistance 1.1. This is on hard terrain, medium terrain 1.5, soft terrain 2.7. You're going to be feeling yourself getting dragged down a lot on that 2.7. You're only going to be able to use about maybe four horsepower per ton inside your 2.7 and even on soft terrain. So I do recommend getting off-road driving as a perk on this tank because that's going to really help kind of negate some of these effects along with uh, clutch braking if you really feel the need to do that. Fire chance. I don't see much of a problem with the fire chance because I have not yet been... Well, I, I can't say that. I've had an artillery splash the back of my turret and set me on fire, but um, out of the 70 matches that I've put inside the T32, uh, the fires, they don't feel as consistent Along with that, reverse speed of 14 kilometers per hour. That's not bad at all. You got some tanks that got 9, 12, 11. Those ones feel slow. But 14, it's a really good, comfortable number to get. You know, it's 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 a decent number. Uh, jumping over, let's take a look at the armor here. Now, one thing that I want to throw out. Let's actually take a look here. APCR. Uh, we're going up against the Kurt right now. This is the Kriavets 1. So the penetration is going to be up against the Kurt. Uh, from the front, let's say you max out your gun depression. Your full 10 degrees. You know, I'm not even going to worry about trying to get that zeroed out. And the only thing you're exposing is your turret. Look at the armor values here. You can go up against 10s and feel comfortable. Extremely comfortable if you're just barely exposing your turret. Even a Yagru is going to have problems penetrating your turret. Now, there is one spot on this turret that's slightly exposed, but the chances of hitting that you, it's it's literally like one in a million shot right there for that 197 armor. It's a pretty decently sized spot too. If you're specifically aiming there, you know, your your chances of hitting it, you're probably, your shell's going to whiff off and you have this small circle that you're going to be hitting around. Might completely miss it altogether. Now, 76 millimeters of side armor uh, down low right here. You have a tiny little, there we go, it's purple. Um, that's 51 millimeters, and what's really cool about that 51 millimeters right here is that since it's 51, you can side scrape against 155s and still auto ricochet. So up against the T11 OE4, OE3, 
um, a Yagru firing AP rounds. If Yagru is firing heat rounds, you're in a lot of trouble. He's just going to rip right through you. But against a lot of tanks, that 51 millimeters right there, you're going to be perfectly fine to side scrape. Now, baiting shells with the front of the tank, a little bit harder to do because you do have this overexposed bumps on the bottom that kind of come out. They curve out a little bit. And, you know, it's, but that you got to, you got to know about the weak spot to be able to shoot it. Um, sometimes you're just going to have guys trying to aim for the track and most of the time they're going to hit the track, hit the top plate, hit the track, hit the lower plate and not really damage the uh, tank entirely. If, if you're pulling around the corner, right now, the rear armor on this tank, you know, your rear, you're not looking at a whole lot of armor here, but one thing that I would like to showcase about this tank, you can reverse side scrape inside this tank. And what we're going to get to is this. Let's go ahead, let's grab a medium, um, specifically a tier 9 medium. And this was a re really nice thing to experience. A so CS59, fully upgraded, it's got a 105. 105 specifically, save. Look at the entire top. It just went purple. Now, let's say you're side scraping, coming around a corner, and you're coming up. Or even if you have to try and rely on that to, you know, defend over your rear because you got some guys coming up behind you and just barely any of your top armor showing, or if you're trying to pull up a hill a little bit to be able to take shots popping over a hill, your rear armor against the 105 does have that auto ricochet angle. So that is something really nice to know about, and this is to give you an idea how much you can aim up before you start losing that auto angle. You can still go up quite a bit, because that top right here, it still maintains quite a bit. So driving up like a hill or something... And they're trying to shoot you in the rear. If they if they aim in right here specifically, they're going to go through. But it's nice to know that the top armor on the rear end is 38. And you can get that auto ricochet against 105s and lower. But 120s and 122s will overmatch. So just know that. Now, jumping back to do the game here. Uh, before we jump into replays, uh, what I want to show off is crew skills, equipment, and everything else that I have on top of my T32. So, starting off, let's go over equipment. We're going to be running advanced optics. I accidentally removed the enhanced target info because um, it wanted to put the advanced loader all the way on the right side for whatever reason. I'm still going to be complaining about the fourth equipment slot. I do not know why they took an in-game mechanic and made it a piece of equipment. And I'm going to complain about it until I see them do something about it because this is obnoxious. Um, improve insulation and advanced loader. So, your basic setup, because, you know, we're going to go for fire rate, we're going to go for view range, getting locked down. Uh, but one of these days, I will be changing up this build and streaming over on Twitch. And we're going to try and do a speed build on this tank to see what we can get this to do with a speed build. Um, other than that, let's go ahead and dive into the first replay. So, Vineyards. Now, if you're playing the T32 and you're platooning up with a couple of guys... Just know, even though your top speed is not the fastest, the way your armor is put together on this tank, and we'll go over the armor a little bit more in detail, um, your top plate, you're looking at 127 millimeters thick. So if you get that at the right angle, it's going to be really gnarly to go up against. Your lower plate, 95 millimeters. Side armor, 76 millimeters. Right below the actual side armor, kind of a little bit slit on the bottom. We already talked about it, the 51 millimeters. It's just going to be really nice. And then the entire top of the tank being 38, it's just going to prevent 105s from overmatching going through. But your your main goal is going to be trying to get it to where you have this position you want to get into. You want to lock it down. You want to go haul down and just not give up at all. Now, the rounds... Shell velocity. We're going to want to go over shell velocity. Um, 945 in your standards, 1181 on your premium APCR. Your high explosives travel at the same rate as the standard shells do, and your high explosives do have 53 millimeters of pin, making them usable, especially since they have a 420 alpha and you have a 7.3 second reload with a fully decked out reload crew focused on reload, sp spotting, and just it honestly. I was not expecting to have this much come out of the T32. And I'm super happy I bought this tank back to be able to show you guys what it's like to play inside this tank. Now, 
this replay was recorded on the 8th and the second replay is actually the first match of the day on the 10th so uh, they, these these matches are really close to one another and one thing i want you to look at is the barrel inside the garage you saw this tank three mark inside this replay that was recorded on the 8th i'm right now recording on the 11th which probably the same day it's going to be uploaded i have no marks on the barrel this tank damage requirement really surprised the absolute crap out of me because it only needs 2400 at this moment in time for a three mark and seeing how well it performs and the positions it can get into how it can lock down how it can be a heavy scout um it kind of reminds me of the pershing and i i enjoyed the pershing a lot because if you can get the pershing lined up correctly the pershing's turret is just absolutely amazing or at least it used to be. I think the Pershing might be the next tier 8 that we're going to drop down to and get our hands on again and play over. But the T32, you're able to make those pushes, those aggressive plays, just because of your turret. Along with that, the side armor, it's just so comfortable to be able to maneuver inside this tank to push up and get a lockdown. The power to weight that the tank has, 13.9. You know, it, it's like, it's not exactly high power to weight, but it's a decent power to weight. And only having a top speed of 35, you, you tend to hit 30 a lot of the time and maintain that speed. Even going up hills, I've never seen it get stuck um, beyond 9. So maintaining that speed, being able to move, get positions, it just, it feels really good. Even up against tier 10s, um, if you guys caught the live stream a couple days ago with the uh, T32... I, I was still going up against 10s just as well as I was going up against 8s and 7s. You know, as long as you can get those positions and you get those haul down spots, T32 is an absolute force to be reckoned with, along with the reload that it offers, the damage. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the T32 overall, how it, how it is. So, inside the garage here, on my screen, not, not the one you guys are seeing, um, I'm going to jump over to medium tanks, take a look at, let's say, the M48A5, the Tier 10 American Patton. Now, T10 American Patton, let's go ahead. Module damage, 150. Okay. Module damage is actually caliber specific, and that's something you don't really see too often to uh, know about. So, since you have that 7.3 second reload you still have the same module damage as every other tank in the game with a 105 module damage does not change modules always have the same exact health and you know if you're looking at let's say another tank it's going to take two shots to damage the damage the ammo rack um the second shot as long as you place it right on the dot for a secondary hit it should damage the ammo rack because ammo racks normally have 250 health um, but the first shell is just to lower the hit points. The second shell has a chance to ammo rack, a chance to pop the top, and even sometimes damaging the ammo rack, you still have a chance to pop the top with a single shell. Or talking about a fuel tank. Fuel tanks only have so many hit points as well, so getting a shot in those with the 7.3 second reload. But, you know, that that's just going over the module damage and how it works. But one of the biggest benefits to the T32 and how it's put together, its module damage is the same across the board as any other 105, and it has a 7.3 second reload. Meaning, you can lock down Conquerors, you can lock down basically any tank with your 105 that any other 105 can do, but you can do it better because you have the rate of fire to keep them permanently tracked if they do not have a highly trained crew, or even if they do have a highly trained crew, we're still looking at a five second repair time to a six second repair time, which means you got 1.3 seconds to aim and plan your shot to be able to track them again out in the open and just permanently lock down people. Now the play here that you're seeing, um, this was actually a game I was playing with Blade and Yuki and it was a really good game. We were kind of falling back a little bit and after we took on the very far distance on the right side and we kind of broke it down, 
I decided to fall back and be rear guard. Um, so the T-32, this is honestly one of those tanks that can play almost any position that you need it to play. It can be considered a rear guard at the same time it can be considered a frontal assault or even a dedicated scouting tank on a uh, heavy flank or for instance let's say you end up on Melanovka and you're taking the icy road all the way down at the left side this tank you get it hauled down you can you can basically hold off with, with um what we did was we ran a couple of tests off stream to see how this tank would hold up um inside of a line i was playing with i can't remember their tags this was a few days ago but what happened was i ran the t32 one of them ran the patriot and the other one was running the uh Krivets one and we ended up in a scenario where it was the three of us on Mountain Pass taking the left side, and we were the only three that went left. So, knowing that we had the Patriot with its 5.1, 5.9 second reload, and then the P32 right here with its 7.3 second reload, and a Kurt, which his setup was the same as my setup because he wanted to try it out, so 10.5 second reload, we managed to hold off five tier 9s, and take like basically just hold off eight tanks altogether and allowing our team to take down the right flank take down the middle and to come over and support us on the far left just because of the rate of fire that we had the permanent track locking and we had a Maotian push up and it was just honestly I was not expecting to see that much come out of you know three tier eight so in in my opinion tech tree tanks they are far more dominant than premium tanks depending on how they're set up and how they're played the t32 in my opinion has got to be one of the best performing tanks i have played in a long time inside tier 8 knowing that and knowing that it's a tech tree tank it, it was really cool to know that this was a tech tree tank that outperformed most of my premiums over the course of that time as well so there's a couple of things about the tank that just it feels absolutely amazing and it was also one of my fastest three marks I ever had. Um, I got the first mark on the 9th and literally the same day uh, near the end of the day I put my third mark on it later that night. So if you guys are looking for an easier tank to try and three mark T32 right now I would say to buy it back go nuts get it and just see if you guys can get a three mark on it and just you use your haul down and check it out and see how it works um, the second replay that's gonna be coming up um, if you guys want you can go ahead skip past it jump to the end because I'm not gonna have much commentary over the second match but it's just so then you guys can take a look and see how the tank performs up against some tens it's it's a it's a decent match it's not no outrageous 4,000, 5,000 damage. I'm not a fan of showing off those matches. I look to show you guys all the strong suits of the tank, ways to position, how to know how to work a ridge line, concealment, uh, uh, every other thing, just to help out the average Joe. You know, if everyone was a super Unicum player, then what would I be? I would be average. So, there, there is that. So, top of the team, 5 kills, 3,107 damage, uh, 1,715 base experience, uh, even made a profit of 31,000, mastery badge, and fire for effect, nice. Top of the team, 1,427 assisted, so yeah, really decent match inside the T32 right there. Jumping over, uh, Desfure, alrighty. You guys, I will comment during the sections. I feel like I want to say a few things, but other than that, enjoy.
All right. I know the commentary. It was lacking a little bit. I I just had a phone call that is uh, really awesome to hear. I'm a little excited. Yeah, you know, let, let's put this on a review. <laughs> All right, but as you guys can see, so far we're still full health, up to 2,100 damage. Um, the E75, I did feel a little bit bad for the E75 just because he was not upgraded. He still had the base turret, which is the reason why we were able to tear right through the front because it's only 185 millimeters. Um, that is a turret that needs to be buffed in my opinion. Uh, there's a lot of lacking inside the game at the moment. Like the Tiger II, it needs a buff. Because even with the standard rounds from the T32, you can get right through their turret and there's almost nothing they can do about it. And some tanks at very specific angles, it doesn't feel like they have an auto ricochet. It feels like it just gets penetrated all the time. So, talking with Minto and, you know, trying to get in contact with devs, um, I'll be taking my time out today to actually send Minto a couple of messages saying that some of these armor models are not adding up to what they're actually supposed to be and try to see if we can get some uh, balance changes pushed if possible. So, fingers crossed on that. I would love to see some increases in armor on just a couple of tanks. Nothing too much, because we don't want to break it. Honestly, T-32 by itself feels a little bit broken. And this replay, the reason why I chose this replay is because the positioning, the angles, we got to areas that they didn't really want to fire at us because they know that they're not going to go through directly. They would rather fire somewhere else to try and handle that instead. And... Looking at it, Iron Rain. We're going to be able to get another shot in on him. And yes, we are for 347. So even the 320 Alpha, it still feels like it high rolls quite a bit compared to a lot of other guns inside the game. Always feeling like they low roll. But it, it is what it is. And so far, I can say T32 has impressed me so much that it's going to be permanently inside my garage. And whenever the uh, ranked gameplay comes out, this will be actually one of my go-tos for tier 8 ranked gameplay. Combined with that, uh, once I make my free-to-play account, I'm going to be grinding out the, T11 e the, the T10 E5 first. Before any other tier 10 inside the game. Because the T32, the way that it's put together, it has decent gun handling. It doesn't feel like it's going to need big requirements on how the crew is supposed to be set up and handled. So there is that too. Um, you could probably get away with a three perk crew, honestly, on the T32. And going over, like, let's say, a couple of things to throw on to have it instead. And right there, third mark, you know, maintaining it. It's going to be very simple to maintain because the damage requirements, they do not feel like a lot on this tank. And it's a little sad to see that it has such low damage. But then again, it's understandable because it is a tech tree tank. And it does have a 90 millimeter to start off with. So if we were going to be taking a look at the commanders, and this is just to help out you guys to try and get it to where if you don't have a highly trained commander of nine perks to try and get this tank to perform a lot better. Now, the three base perks that you're going to be wanting to do, you can avoid rapid loading and born leader to start off with. The ones I would recommend right away would be six sense, situational awareness, and track mechanics. The reason why is because you're going to want to get your view range up to be able to spot out the opponents at a distance. That way you can actually use your haul down, depending if you're pulling instead of a platoon or not with somebody else that has a good crew or they're playing as a light tank and being dedicated in that role. Um, Sixth Sense, kind of, you know, commonly known about. You want to know if you're spotted or not. And then Track Mechanic, just to be able to get you back up on your feet quicker if you're trying to play a little bit more aggressive to get into a position or to help prevent you getting locked down. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll leave a, <laughs> leave, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you want to give out donations, keep in mind all donations to the channel are specifically only for uh, my setup in general for helping out with content related issues and giveaways later in the future. Primarily, if you want to donate, um, the next thing I will be upgrading on my computer is going to be the RAM. So that's about it. And that's just to help try and prevent the blue screen crash that I had a little while back because of memory management. So until next time, you guys have an absolute blast. And a shout out to Brute Bullet. Seriously, man, you don't need to do this, but you go and do it anyways. Thank you for the uh, T72. Really nice of you, man. I'll put some matches in this and stream for you later.
So don't have too much fun. Catch you then.